I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll. Grant Pissoon. Here. Tobin. Here. Kleiner. Here. Johnson. Here. John Francois. Here. Burr. Here. Green. Here. Massey. Here. President Rodriguez. Here. We have a quorum. Approval of minutes. Tonight we have the Common Council meeting minutes of April 21st, 2020. So Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Green. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of uh, correspondence. Tonight we have uh, just two correspondence. Uh, one from Agriculture and Marketing. It's just a shelter inspector report for Pets Alive and the Middletown Shelter. Received and filed. That is all for correspondence. <clears throat> okay, for the good of the city, do we have anybody on online that would like to ask a question? We do not currently have anyone that would like to. I'd like to ask the mayor to come up and give his remarks. I'll be brief. Yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> I want to thank you for uh, changing the agenda once again so we can keep people uh, in Middletown up to date on what we're doing here in the city of Middletown uh, re regarding the COVID-19. We have some big announcements tonight to make. I know a lot of parents are waiting for them, so uh, let me begin. Uh, what we have done so far is the measures that we have taken to date in the city. Uh, this slide outlines them about all boards and, commis and commissions that have been uh, canceled. The Common Council meetings have been switched over to a virtual town hall. Um, the city's been doing a lot of different things between uh, the drive-by birthday parties in the police department, trying to build up morale in the community, especially of our kids, and also the um, um, the MIDI's uh, Meals on the Move programs that have been happening. So we've been pretty busy. And just to give you an idea, uh, before I get into the uh, next part of the program, in the um, in Orange County, the people sometimes don't recognize the seriousness of what we're going through here in, in the Mid-Hudson. But um, in Orange County alone, and these are today's numbers, we've had 10,158 positive cases of COVID-19. Um, and throughout that, with that, um, the number one community in Orange County, and this is, these are not prices, um, the city of Newburgh has 1,397 of those cases. And the city of Middletown is number two with 1,070 cases of uh, COVID-19. Middletown Walkill area is almost 2,000 cases. Uh, the city of Newburgh, New Windsor, town of Newburgh area is almost 3,000 cases, 2,700 or so. So it's a serious thing we're dealing with. And the number of deaths um, are uh, still increasing. But... We are at the point where um, the governor is making some decisions shortly about reopening the, um, the community, meeting the, all the different metrics that they've laid out. So I've laid out the measures taken to, you know, up to this point. Some of the programs, as you know, in the council, the public might not know all about them, is that we have a, the city created our own food delivery program to seniors, and then it expanded on to uh, seniors and disabled folks. And then we've also included people who have a financial hardship. To date, through that program, which is delivered, uh, packaged by the Parks and Rec Department, purchased by them, um, we've had 384 deliveries by the Middletown Police Department. And that's basically door-to-door -door service from someone calls and gets on a list. Um, they need the essentials and even more. Uh, we've had food donated that we're now including in that. We've had the public donating money we received a $500 check from a former Middletown resident today uh, who lives up in Sullivan County. Um, and we've received similar you know, donations from others. Uh, so we're, we're combining our city funds with the private donations of cash and the private donations of food and, um, and other products. It's all being handled at the, um, at the rec center and, as I said, distributed by the Middletown Police Department. That's in addition to the Middletown School District, um, in partnership with the Parks and Recreation Department, has served over 250,000 meals so far since the crisis began. And that's a huge number. Um, I believe they provide meals seven days a week on Fridays. They do um, give meals for the weekend also, or our school was not in session that day. So that's, that's a huge number. 
And again, that's in partnership with um, our uh, our Parks and Recreation Department. The the buying the food and is all provided through the school district. The preparation. So I want to thank you know all the school district workers and and the people involved in the program. And then the third part is the Guild of St. Margaret's. And as you know, we've provided a ten thousand dollar grant to them. That was to cover three months of their overhead. Um, we have uh, they are now in the area of. 10 to 15,000 meals served on a, I believe it's on a monthly basis, whereas before the crisis, uh, they were doing about 3,000 meals on a monthly basis. So you can imagine the need financially and also the need for volunteers, which has diminished because of people getting sick. And um, so we're participating with some money into that program. <clears throat> we have 10,000, and we're also going to, um, I think, in our COVID um, uh, 19 grant from the first round of the federal money of which we received 292,000. We're putting an additional 15,000 into this program and also the um, our, our food pantry. We're putting in $15,000 of that grant money into those programs. We also have uh, cooperated with the county. The county executive, Steve Newhouse, has sent up a mask for distribution and some hand sanitizer. Not everyone received hand sanitizer, but uh, we're in the middle of this program and distribution. Some of the larger apartment complexes, like Tall Oaks and Summit Field, David Moore Heights, we did uh, work with the offices there. Uh, the police, we made pre-arrangements to be dropped off, where we had packages of disposable masks, in some cases uh, the cloth masks that were handed out through the county and, uh, and distributed by the county. Our targets are high density areas, and especially areas where low to moderate income people uh, are residing or people have trouble getting access to masks and sanitizers. We're going to try to expand that program also as soon as product becomes available. Um, I put up the slide because this is uh, one of the drivers of what I'm going to be talking about next and about things that are closed in the city of Middletown and will remain closed. Uh, the governor has been talking about this for quite a while. Not huge numbers. I think it's in the hundreds plus of uh, childhood inflammatory disease related to COVID-19. Uh, children are dying, um, and many are getting very sick. So uh, for the past two weeks, I've been speaking to uh, Superintendent Prinkerhoff about what direction she feels that we should be looking um, for the summer youth programs. We've had ups and downs in those discussions about uh, sometimes we feel a little bit that we may be able to do some programs. But on the other hand, um, we're, we're balancing both the risks, not only to our employees, but also, in this case, to the 300 plus kids that participate in these camps and other city activities. So we're announcing tonight that for the summer, and, and we're not, um, we're, we're doing this uh, with a heavy heart. We don't like doing it, but um, it's been looked at. It's been talked about on our regional mayor's conferences. I believe Kingston has also uh, done something similar. New Windsor is doing something similar. All pools will be closed, um, public pools in the city of Middletown will be closed for this year. Um, this is not a budgetary issue, but it is a health issue. And going back to the slide right here, um, if anyone wants to go online and read it, if you haven't read about this disease, it's a horrible disease. I don't think any of us in this room or the public would like to have that on our conscience that we felt that we should open public pools in order to give kids an outlet and jeopardize the health and safety of not only workers, but especially the children. All summer camp programs will also be canceled. Playground equipment will remain closed um, at this point, uh, pending further, um, you know, that's something that can be opened up at any time. Pools in summer camp cannot be opened up at any time. You have to mobilize staff, you have to mobilize uh, uh, opening the pool. So those are done for the summer. They're canceled. Playground equipment will evaluate on a month-by-month -month basis. The Orange Classic and Ruthie Dino race have also been canceled by the, uh, uh, by the, the race uh, organizers. Uh, the Bid Summer Concert Series, which I know a lot of people in our community look forward to, is also canceled. The Stars and Stripes celebration um, and fireworks for the 4th of July or the week before the 4th of July is canceled. Our outdoor movie program is canceled. Our Christmas in July that has been successful over the last few years is canceled, along with the North Street Art Walk, 
um, that started maybe last year or the year before that is also canceled. Uh, some of you have inquired about road paving and we have decided after discussions with uh, uh, the council president and uh, Alderman Massey and, and uh, Commissioner Tawil, uh, we have postponed the, not canceled the program, but we'll be doubling up on road paving in next year's budget. Um, also, this is CHIPS money, which is transferable from this year to next year. We don't think it would be appropriate to put large groups of people in that kind of atmosphere where it's heavy enough to breathe into uh, with masks on covering, you know, um, uh, doing blacktop and paving. Summer activities that are still pending uh, the, and will be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis as time moves on. Uh, the Senior Center. Uh, this is a, it continues to be a tough call because we do get some um, pretty sad communications from seniors that uh, they wish the center was open. And I know that, say in the case of my mother, she's one of them. And when you explain to them the danger to, you know, we have both ends here. We have children and now we have seniors. And this was the first group that was targeted. So we're going to continue to look at that on a month-to-month -month basis to see what guidance the state and county health department gives us. But at, the, at this time, the bus will continue to run. Uh, we have initiated a program at the senior center where they are continually calling people um, that are part of their program. And I think that list is well over a thousand people plus, uh, giving them some, um, you know, asking them if they need anything, we'll provide it for them, but also giving them some companionship and, 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 and giving some conversation, especially the people, especially the people who are, are home alone. The run for downtown um, is in the mid to late August. Um, Maria met with their organizers the other night. Uh, they're not at the point where they would like to cancel. They would like to see how things move along. Um, it's you know a few months down the road. It wasn't like the Ruthie Dino or the Orange Classic, uh, which were in early June. So uh, we're asking them to make a decision by the end of June. We may make a decision for them even at that time, but at least to buy a few more weeks um, in order for things to uh, see how things are working out. The picnic pavilion rentals at uh, the uh, at the park I discussed with Chris. I know they canceled them um, last uh, last week. We canceled I think the rest of May. Uh, we're going to cancel June also, and uh, we'll go on a month by month uh, basis. So sometime in June, we'll make a determination whether we're going to look at July. Uh, the Paramount Theater. Uh, stay healthy and safe, and we will see you soon. Is a sign, as you know, we canceled all of our activities, all of our shows, including movies, at the Paramount Theater. Um, this falls into phase four of the governor's reopening plans. And as you know, Middletown, not Middletown, the Mid-Hudson region is not even in phase one yet. So um, we'll wait for some guidance from the state. Live entertainment is absolutely out. Uh, the theater is large enough that if there was a opportunity to reopen for live movies, uh, we would uh, consider it on a maybe a 20% occupancy level and people would be able to social distance. Um, the, as we move forward, the reasons for giving the discussions on the uh, or consideration to reopening parks <coughs> and to possibly reopening the Paramount Theater for, um, for movies and other city parks that require a lot of attention right now is the additional use of CDBG COVID funds. And these are two of the machines that we're purchasing using that federal grant um, obtained through Senator Schumer and Congressman Maloney and Senator Gillibrand. Uh, this, these are both steam units. One is obviously a portable one, the one on, on the right. The other is, um, is trailered. Uh, when we do reopen both the parks um, and once the equipment is in, we will be steam cleaning all equipment, playground equipment, park benches, and any public area that we can, um, you know, downtown benches also, not just parks, but we'll be doing anywhere people are sitting and touching on at least hopefully a daily basis. Uh, the equipment, as I said, has been, uh, we're waiting for the final authorization from HUD to issue the purchase order. I believe the uh, turnaround is very quick on acquiring the equipment. So we expect sometime in June that we'll be able to move forward with this um, sanitizing project. We're also to announce some positive stuff about uh, some of the reopening. Uh, tennis courts have been reopened by the state. 
So as of um, as of tomorrow, um, Chris is authorized to reopen the tennis courts, and um, I believe it's on a scheduling basis. But um, she'll be uh, monitoring that and handling that. The city parks will remain open, and I mentioned the borrowing the playground equipment, and um, the parks are being heavily used right now. Um, a lot of walking, a lot of people hiking, and uh, just sitting in the parks and enjoying the parks. The Bid Farmers Market will open on June 6. This is a um, is being also encouraged by the state. There'll be special guidelines that the bid district is required to follow um, with social distancing and and other sanitary requirements, and there's limitations on what they can and cannot do. But I believe as of yesterday, I thought they had like 10 farmers that were interested or may have file, filed applications. So um, the bid farmers market hopefully will, will be a big success this year. The dog park, which was closed because people were not social distancing, will be reopened on May 20th. So the reason why it was closed, people, was because people were not paying attention. Not the dogs, the people. <laughs> so we need to pay attention, otherwise we'll have to close it again. So if someone is invading your space at the dog park, say something, walk away, wear a mask, proper social distancing is required, and uh, we'll be able to keep the facility open. Um, it's not, um, it's very easy for us to close it. Um, Alderman Massey is a big advocate of the dog park. He goes up there, I think, with little doggy biscuits as he carries in his pocket, and it's very nice to the dogs. Not so nice to the people, but he's very nice to the dogs. <laughs> but the, the dogs, uh, the dog park is a necessity in this community now. People are accustomed to it. They want it. They want their dogs to be able to exercise. But it, again, the people have to pay attention to the, to the rules. The farmer's market that I just mentioned returns on June 6th. Um, it's going to go through October 24th. It's 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, it's in the same location on Airy Way. As you know, we're looking to move it over. Um, after this year's construction for next year, so it probably will be the last year at the uh, at the Erie Way site over on um, Erie site over on uh, Cottage Street. So please, um, if you have an opportunity, to stop down at the farmers market. Phase one of the reopening of the Mid Hudson. Um, everyone's been pushing it. Um, the governor, actually, it's the federal government. The CDC has laid out seven metrics that need to be met. Um, once we meet those, uh, construction, and as you can see, retail, limited, manufacturing, wholesale trade, and agricultural, forestry, fishing, and hunting um, will once again be allowed. And my understanding is the day we meet those metrics, the very next day, the governor will authorize those to be released. This is another part of if the public doesn't continue to practice social distancing, and the region goes backwards and does start failing to keep those metrics steady, then they will once again, which will be much worse economically for us if we go backwards on this. If you open and then have to close, it'll be horrible. So please, if you're enjoying all these things or if you're working in construction, you must, you must follow the directions that the fact that we reopen does not mean you don't have to do social distancing and you don't have to wear a mask when out in public around people. These are the metrics in, um, that are, have to be met. I can't read them on my screen. It's a little bit too small. I do know the two that are, the one that's sticking right now for the Mid-Hudson region is either 14 consecutive days of decline in deaths or the, um, which were in, I think, maybe our fourth day or fifth day right now, or three consecutive days with average of five le five deaths or uh, five deaths or less over a three day average. That's the one that they're. Uh, once we meet that, they feel that we're going to be able to kick in and open up phase one of this region. But all of that is available online under ny.gov, uh, and all of these charts that you see related to the state of New York are available there for your review. Moving forward. And that's what we're trying to do now is move forward uh, with municipal construction projects. Uh, we have a few small projects that have been ongoing. And um, as you know, we just awarded the DRI parking improvements. 
and the creation of the Erie Way Park that I just referenced in the back of City Hall here. We scaled down the project a little bit. This is a $5 million project um, entirely funded through New York State. This was the Downtown Revi Revitalization Initiative that we won three or four years ago. Um, planning the Woolworths project, the facade project are underway. This is the final part of that project and the biggest part of that project. So you're going to be in downtown this summer. Um, you're going to see a lot of construction um, regarding this uh, funding source, which was uh, through Governor Cuomo. Our new recreation and parks building located at the former Start Center on County Route 78 um, has been ongoing and we're pretty close to moving into the facility. Unfortunately, um, we're not going to have any kids in there to move in immediately, but when they, that'll give us more time to, um, to work on it. Uh, the gymnasium has been painted. The uh, interior, the Parks Department guys under John Bianchi uh, and Chris is, uh, I guess, must have laid it out because John's not that creative, uh, that they did a tremendous job with inside the facility. And you're going to see um, a huge, huge difference. I don't know if all of you have been up there, or if any of you have been up there and had the opportunity, but there's three main structures and then some supporting structures like garages. The main building is 14,000 square feet. Uh, the preschool, administration, and other programs, the boxing will operate there. A separate building is a gymnasium, and it has some uh, rooms off the side there. And the third building is a where the Orange County Police Chiefs Association will be operating the Orange County um, training uh, facility, basically for new officers. And uh, the City Hall will also have, as if you recall, part of our audit criticisms from New York State. Uh, the New York State Comptroller, when they did audit, was that we did not have a backup facility for City Hall records in case City Hall closed. There will be three rooms in the Recreation Department building. They will be on, the whole building is on a backup generator, or will be on a backup generator, and those three rooms will house backups of all city records and will be, God forbid there was a disaster downtown and we were unable to open City Hall or the police station had to be relocated, we would be able to relocate the facility and open city government the very next day at that site. So it's an important project for us. The Paramount Theater improvements, again, uh, and by the way, the Recreation and Parks Building, that is being done with a uh, three to $400,000 grant from Senator Metzger's office. We're not sure if we're gonna use all 400,000. We're trying to reprogram some. We might need some, might not need it. But um, regardless, that was a half a million dollar grant provided through Senator Metzger with 100,000 also going to a downtown project, which is gonna be mentioned in a little while. The Paramount Theater improvements. Another grant through New York State, and um, that is the uh, the doors and the windows and uh, our Maria, is that or is that the um, is that both the doors, windows, and the and, and the sound system? The, that's sound system. That's sound that, system. But that will be occurring. That will be, be occurring. occurring. All right. So th there's two part two projects ongoing at the Paramount. One is the sound system, and the improvements are being installed. The speaker systems and uh, the rigging, and, and that's, um, I think it's well over a $200,000 project. Again, majority grant. And the doors, the front doors are being uh, restored to some historical look um, in the front windows of the building. And I think there's some ADA issues that are being um, addressed within the theater. So um, we'll have basically a brand new theater, hopefully when, when we're able to reopen. Uh, we'll sell a field, we opened the bids last week came in pretty high. We only had two, uh, two bidders. So uh, we, we did put everything in on the bid on the, everything but the kitchen sink. So we're doing a reevaluation of what we want to do there, what we could do in-house. So we're hoping to have a, um, a uh, award um, at the one of the June meetings, probably the first meeting in June, and have a, uh, a bid award. Uh, the East Main Orchard Walkway is undergoing, has been going um, on for about uh, maybe a few weeks. That's the connection between East Main Street over to Orchard behind Tompkins and tying into the Woolworths project. It's a beautiful project. It was done in conjunction with the church, uh, First Congregational Church, and we're um, thankful they gave us the easement through their property in order to do it. The design looks great, and that should be open um, 
it's a lot of work, a lot more work than I thought, um, and hopefully will be open uh, will be open this summer. Uh, the Paramount Theater parking improvements is a, not just the theater; it's the area across the street from the theater. The fencing, um, with all that rusty, f broken fence will be torn down, both there and at the lower court building. Um, again, this is all grant money, or a hundred thousand is grant money. The additional hundred thousand may be um, uh, moved grant money from the Start Center or up to, and we might have um, additional funds available in the capital budget money that was already borrowed that is remaining from old projects. And the Monhagen Avenue Water Main project, I think you're voting on that tonight. That's a four million dollar project. Uh, there was a five hundred thousand dollar grant. Um, Jacob will go into detail on that and uh, uh, regarding how important it is to the to the city. It's an 1800 something uh, main line that services uh, a good portion of our city. We've had frequent breaks. We're relocating the 12-inch line here also, but Jacob can go into detail on the project itself, especially since you're going to be spending $4 million of capital money tonight. Um, we're, re oh, we're not spending all of that tonight on that. We're requested a, I think it's 1.3, Jacob, of a, one of the, of the yes, water, yeah, the water storage tank money that was a, that was port partial grant on there to be moved over. But he can explain the details of the project to you. As you know, I've mentioned a few weeks ago that um, the projected budget shortfall for 2020 is $5.1 million. So you might say, Hi, why are you doing all these things here when you have a projected deficit here? Well, one is the deficit is not forever. The deficit is hopefully 2020 only. Number two, um, I am of the belief that uh, the deficit that the federal government will come through with local and state aid. I think it's just a game now that's being, <coughs> not, not a game, but it's, it's each side um, going back and forth with each other over the, um, uh, what priorities they have. And um, McConnell has expressed his priority to be um, the waiver for businesses, a waiver of business liability for COVID um, if someone gets infected. And the Democrats at this point um, have, from what Pelosi and through McConnell, uh, through Maloney's office, Congressman Maloney, his priority is getting state and local aid. Without state local aid, we will probably be looking at, and I'm, this is not a, a threat, um, this is a reality. Um, without state and local aid, next year's budget will be very difficult if the economy does not bounce back. So we have two things. One, the immediate need, the immediate need this year is going to be $5.1 million or more. So how do you pay for this year's budget without, um, if, if you don't have that cash? Fortunately, we do have the cash. We have about $11 million in our fund balance, which is our savings account. And one of the reasons why we try to keep a stable savings account is for these types of, um, of events. So no one is facing a layoff this year. So I, I just, and I've discussed with a couple of the department heads just that point. Uh, I'm not looking to lay anybody off. We are also in the fortunate position about uh, the sanitation plan. Sanitation plan will relieve a burden over a period of years, not immediate, but we're going to be able to reduce staff over a period of years. Mr. Massey is shaking his head about his, saying his sanitation plan looks very good right now with the million dollar plus savings, but it is what it is. We're here and we'll, we'll deal with it. I believe we're going to get aid, state and local aid from the federal government, but we need to be prepared and start developing a plan in case we don't. And in case we don't, and you've heard, um, you've heard Congressman Maloney say it a hundred times, Schumer and Gillibrand, um, they're all saying it, that if you don't give state and local aid from the federal government, you're laying off police, firemen, nurses, teachers, um, doctors, you're, that's who you're laying off. You're not providing aid to the city of Middletown. You're providing aid to communities. That money is then used to pay the salaries of those people who have just been through hell over the past four months protecting us. Uh, so the, there's a lot in the bill. 
There's also a HEROES Fund in the bill for other essential workers, um, which well deserved, but is not our argument here. Our argument is to make sure that state and local government gets their fair share of the pie. Contingency is, if we don't, what do we do next year? The figure that I gave the Congressman Maloney's office is probably we would be looking at laying off probably about 35 people next year and, and compound that with a significant property tax increase. So that's not desirable by anyone. And the more people you lay off, the less increase you have to have in taxes. But I don't see, especially with numbers rising in these red states and the economic um, uh, problems that they're starting to have, like um, Florida, states that rely on tourism, uh, they're going to have budget problems also. So I think it's going to happen. If it doesn't happen, we've got to have a plan. We're good for this year. Hopefully that plan will happen over the next few months. The Orange County Del Health Department. Uh, myself, uh, Jacob Tweel, and Chief Iwanchu were on the line yesterday with them. Um, they've identified certain hotspots in communities with higher rates of infection. How they calculated that, I don't know. We don't have access to that data. Uh, we were given a map today. Um, it's, it's not clear for us, so we're looking for clarification of some streets. They didn't identify blocks, but they identified entire streets of places that might, um, well, it, it really was confounded. We were confused a little bit because it was either two to four cases on that street or five to nine cases. But um, there's not a lot of streets that have those numbers. So considering that we have over a thousand cases, um, it really the map doesn't match up to the reality of, uh, of what we're looking at. So we're gonna look for clarification from them. Uh, the police will be going out with the Orange County Health Department, just in an educational. I mean, they're gonna hand out pamphlets, they're gonna talk to people, and they're gonna make them aware of what's happening and that uh, you know, we have a high volume, uh, high number of people. Every community they're doing this in, not just Middletown. Every community just about has, from probably way beyond, uh, Middle, Middletown, way beyond the area uh, east, is having problems. And then especially as you go down south also in the southern part of the county. So there are, there are issues. Apparently western uh, Orange County doesn't have a big, big problem, but they do have a problem. And, and uh, so it's not... Um, Absent of high numbers doesn't mean you don't have a problem because people are working. And um, we had a discussion on the conference call last week or earlier this week regarding Warwick and, and whether, um, you know, whether people, f uh, Supervisor Sweeten apologized for it. I think it came across wrong. He was, it's almost, you, some places are beginning to get this mentality of, you know, the wall mentality mm -hmm. that you have a high number, so maybe you shouldn't be doing. Maybe people there shouldn't be coming over to here. Uh, same thing with going to the next state or the next county. So it, it's, it's kind of crazy, but I understand people are nervous. But, um, you know, I, I countered with is, you know, it's our workers, our residents are workers in these supermarkets, in your factories. And this is the makeup of the city of Middletown. It's a blue collar town. We have our professionals, yes, but we also have a high volume of people who work in supermarkets. And of course, that industry has been hurt by the people that work in the industry have been hurt through this through this crisis. So um, I, I think we all have a better understanding now in the county after having the discussion that it's not any one community, it's all the communities in the county, and then the county understands that it's also the Mid-Hudson region, that you know you can't just keep isolating county, city, region, and all that. So um, I, I think we made our point in, in, in the phone call. Enforcement, um, they, we've been asked to step up enforcement. Uh, the chief did call down today, Chief Iwanchu, um, to discuss that, I know, with county officials today in emergency management. And uh, because we haven't had many calls, and we, we, we got the initial impression that there were a lot of problems that we weren't aware of. But after that telephone call, he found out, I think, the, the county task force, I think, had two calls um, regarding people violating in Middletown. That's pretty good. Um, so the, but the police department is doing courtesy uh, checks on people or on businesses. If you know a business that is open that should not be open, you should call the police department. They will look into it. Um, we're looking for the clarification now from the state after phase one opens um, so that people know what businesses can be open, cannot be open. Barbershops, that's the number one. I need one. 
Uh, badly, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I tried doing a little bit myself, and it uh, didn't come out that well. <laughs> but the um, the that's the number one question we get: When can I get a haircut? And we all sympathize with you. Um, Jacob doesn't have to worry about it, <laughs> but uh, mostly, most of all of us here have to worry about it. And, and Jerry doesn't have to worry about it either. He just puts this in a ponytail. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> well, I got to worry about it. And I'm sure some of you do, too. Uh, so when the guidelines come out, we'll make sure the police and the public are aware of it. I urge everyone to sign up for Nixel. We still, for a community of 28,000 people, we don't have enough of you signed up for the emergency notifications, the public service notifications. This way, you'll find out what's happening in your community almost immediately. You'll know if there's a water main break. You'll know um, if there are going to be people in your neighborhood doing these types of enforcement efforts. So please sign up for it. Go to the Middletown website. And it's very easy to do. And um, again, the, the businesses that have been allowed to remain open and ones that have been ordered to shut down, um, they themselves have a responsibility. They can go on, I believe, Maria's NY.gov. And I think you can put your business in there now, and they'll tell you um, directly whether you can or cannot open your business. Just a point of information, food trucks and ice cream trucks are now allowed to go out as of uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, again, we don't allow food trucks in our downtown area, but we do have uh, one or two ice cream <coughs> trucks. And when they came out a month or so ago, there was a big uproar about it, a lot of concern. They must practice social distancing. I spoke with the operator today. Uh, they have to practice social distancing. They got to make sure that their customers are doing that, but they are allowed to open. The electronic drop-off, which was canceled um, we had to reschedule it, and the earliest date, well, the earliest date we can get was September 5th, um, but that's Labor Day weekend, and that's why it was available. So the, uh, the next date that was open is October 24th. Um, I had a discussion with Jacob whether we could um, accept stuff from people now and store it, and the answer is no um, for a couple of reasons. I don't think we have enough storage, but number two, the company is on site that day, and they do the packaging on the pallets, and it's not really handled by uh, the city uh, workers assist people in taking it off the car, but it's put on pallets. It's packaged right there. So it would be a nightmare for us to take these um, TVs in, so people have to suffer for a few more months. October 24th, earliest we can do it. Bulk pickup, another very popular complaint. Why aren't you doing it? I've explained it at the meetings. We are doing it now, and uh, people can put out uh, their bulk items the Sunday before their um, their ward is scheduled to pick up. Don't put them out a week before. If you have them out now, please take them in. Um, the inspectors have been going around notifying people. I know there was some confusion with the cancellation, but if you had Nixle, you would have known that it was canceled. But we're again, we're here where we are. It's uh, I think it's June. 3rd. 15th is the fourth ward. We're going four, three, two, one. Next year, we'll change it around and we'll rotate. But this year, there should be no problem with anyone being early because the whole darn program is late this year. So um, um, we also created a COVID small business loan program. Um, this is not utilizing city funds. This is the federal grant, the COVID monies. It's a new uh, small business loan program being drafted. Um, Maria has drafts available if you're, anyone's interested. Give her a call or, and she can discuss it with you, what we're proposing. The program will be announced upon final approvals from, from the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Renewal and the funds are provided directly by HUD. We've allocated $160,000 of this program, um, of this grant, which was $292,000 towards this uh, business recovery program. So we'll be um, able to uh, help people in a small way. This is in addition to if people did get PPP or any of the other federal programs. Orange County um, IDA had a program similar, I think, 500,000 uh, uh, countywide. So 160,000 citywide is some pretty significant money for this type of program. Now, the big news, we took away a lot of things. And sadly, we had to take away a lot of things uh, from camps to uh, swimming pools to other enjoyment uh, for you know movies out on a town or 
our recreational Friday nights, which we see a lot of old timers that we've enjoyed meeting up with. But this Saturday at noon, we will be opening up the reservoir trails. And that is a exciting project for us. It's almost nine miles of trail. Uh, we have relocated the visiting center to 435 Van Duzer Road. It's actually not on the map, Van Duzer, 435 Van Duzer Road, on the county map, but it is between three, whatever, just it's once you hit 379 Van Duzer or something along those lines, just keep driving and you'll see a, a little garage and a big parking area, um, and you'll see some people there. Friday or Saturday at noon, we're going to cut the ribbon. Uh, we're going to be practicing social distancing. The parking area is big, so if um, anyone would like to attend, please do so. I spoke with Senator Metzger today. Um, she's planning on being there also, but we. Uh, uh, this is a great opportunity. You are going to be shocked if you haven't been up there. Um, and we're going to, um, uh, Middletown residents will certainly enjoy it. These are real pictures. These are not uh, uh, things that we took off of the uh, Facebook. These are real pictures. And um, really, the lakes are beautiful. Uh, we're, uh, this is where John Bianchi um, really stepped up to the plate in his department. Um, and... I know Chris was involved in the planning, but the implementation um, goes, the credit goes to John and the workers. I mean, uh, um, I tease him. First of all, John's my cousin, so I can tease him. But he's been here for over 30 years. And I, I tease him, he's done more work in the last year than he did in his previous 29. <laughs> because he has. And <laughs> he came back at me, but I can't say what he said. But when you see the job that they have done, you're going to be impressed. I mean, it's um, it's a beautiful facility. Um, all of the brochure, the brochures are the paper ones are out. They're, 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 it has the QR on it on the map. The trail system is going to be color coded. There are going to be at least three or four points of entry. The main point of entry will be here at um, off of Van Duzer. That's a rougher part of the trail, but uh, the trails are are, are identified by. I think some difficulty area, like the Black Trail, is the easiest trail to follow. Those are what you see here, where um, where the it's actually like a little bit of a road. But the lakes are beautiful. It's a beautiful time of the year. Um, if you run across a deer, beer, or fox, you'll see all kinds of wildlife. But please, uh, do not on the back or trail rules. Do not do any of the following, especially. No swimming, boating, hunting, or fishing. And then there's a whole list of no's. So the yeses are enjoy the facility, enjoy the outdoors, but do not impact our ability to keep this trail open for the public. Um, we're talking with Alex um, Smith, our attorney, on how we can actually ban people from public property from this type of facility if they are in violation major violation of any of these. So if we catch you swimming in the reservoirs, you will be banned from that property for an awful long time. Uh, Middletown Police will be patrolling. The property is mostly in the town of Walk Hill. Uh, we're working on an inter what we hope will be finalized, an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Walk Hill to allow Middletown Police to enforce the law on the property. Regardless of whether we do or don't reach an agreement, the Middletown Police will be patrolling the area. We have taken, we believe, every safety measure. We have funded the Howells Fire Department with an emergency mountain vehicle. A portion of that cost, I think $10,000, is what we contributed to a $30,000 um, uh, piece of equipment. Uh, the Middletown Police Department also has a side-by-side -side that can go up in case somebody gets hurt on one of the rougher trails that are in the hills. But um, it's a beautiful place to enjoy, and um, I'm, we're expecting with all the eyes that will be up there, that'll also be a safer place for the city of Middletown with multiple people keeping an eye on the reservoir. You'll see it's a treasure, and please respect it. We can't wrap up anything without 10 minutes for 10 years, and that's the census. Um, we have climbed over the 50% mark on responses. Um, we've identified neighborhoods that need more assistance. 
um, where the response rate is lower in certain census tracts in certain neighborhoods. So we're going to be doing some more work with uh, certain communities and certain not-for-profits to try to get the word out to have people fill out the census forms. It is so important, and it's important to funding and any money that is going to come out of the federal government down the line for any type of program is dependent upon census. Any state money is dependent upon census. The biggest one for us on an annual basis, and I've said it over and over and I'll keep saying it, is sales tax distribution. Sales tax is our number two revenue source in the city, and it is strictly based upon <coughs> the population allocation uh, of the allocation of funds is based on population between the three cities. So if Middletown's 30,000, Port Jervis is 30,000, and or 40,000, 40,000, and Port is 20,000, we're going to get 40% of the pie. If our 30 goes down to our 40 goes down to 30, we're going to get a lot less of the pie. So it's pretty simple. And if you're interested in keeping your city services up to the level that we have them, you need to fill out the census. If you have any trouble, you can call Maria um, and they can give you some direction. We can also contact, we're going to have enumerators, people who can actually go out and help you uh, fill out the census. You can do it over the phone. only takes a few minutes. So please take the time to do it. Make sure everyone in your house is counted, whether it's children, infants, doesn't matter. You just can't count your dog. And we'd like to thank all the first responders, essential workers. It includes everyone from the supermarkets to our street department crews, uh, people picking up your sanitation, your trash, people who are the you know doctors, nurses. We want to continue to thank everyone um, for everything they're doing for us. And lastly is there will be no Memorial Day parade this year. Uh, we were contacted today. We knew it was coming. Uh, but the American Legion Post 151 will conduct a small memorial service on Way Wayanda Avenue. They haven't selected the date or time as of this afternoon. The ceremony will be videotaped and shared with the public, and we will hopefully put it up on our website also if you want to view it after, um, after they provide it to us. Um, Amer American Legion Post 1181 to the town, uh, um, uh, town of Wallkill. We'll conduct a small memorial service on Monday, May 25th at 9 a.m. at the Memorial Park um, on Highland and North. And uh, the amount of participants for both events will be limited uh, to New York by New York State guidelines. So I want to wish um, everyone a, <coughs> a uh, successful Memorial Day. Hopefully people will go out and remember um, those who paid the ultimate price. I also want to offer my condolences to Dr. Johnson's family. I don't know I, if everyone's aware that his mom passed away, I believe, on Mother's Day. Day before. Day before Mom's Day. And so our condolences to you and, uh, and to your family. Thank you. And that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Um, sure. uh, just, just one question. The bulk pickup, um, if I read your public announcement or press release right, you said you're not going to allow pickers to go through yes, the yes. bulk, and I think that's something. If it's important true, point, we ought to. No, I, I, you're right. Um, there seems to be an annual ritual. I, I don't think it's only Middletown, but no. I think it's a, a lot of places. People do go around, and they they sift through garbage, or not garbage. I guess it's other people's garbage, right? Or items, and um, but this year we're not allowing it because it's going to require multiple times of handling that. So um, the police will be issuing tickets uh, under our city code. I know we've consulted with our attorney. So please do not do it. If, you're, if you live here, don't do it. If you see somebody doing it, call the police. And if you don't live here and you usually come in and do it, don't do it because you will be ticketed. So whatever worthy treasure you find, you're going to have a problem um, answering to the, uh, to the police on that matter. It is very – we're trying to limit, you know, if, if many of us know that not everybody does it in the most professional way, <laughs> that they throw things into the road or they throw things back on people's lawns. So we're trying to prevent all that from, from being handled. Do not do it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for bringing that up. Alvin Tolman. Just related to Memorial Day, uh, I know the 
So the VFW was thinking about getting the Vietnam Wall, like the, the, the bringing it up to Middletown, like a it's a replica. Do you know if they're still thinking about yes, doing that? Yes. Uh, well, the it's it's through Mount Carmel. Oh, my, okay. Yeah, and as of now, I think it's still on. All right. But I don't know how that was before COVID. Right. Uh, it was scheduled for some time during the summer, so it hasn't been canceled to my knowledge. But it's a it's a it's a basically a traveling wall. Mm -hmm. And um, it's done with in cooperation with local veterans groups, and uh, I don't know specifically which one, but it's being done at St. Albert's in Mount Carmel oh, okay. um, area. I think I'm an American Legion, right? <laughs> Anyone else? All right, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Reports of department heads, economic development. Forty-nine minutes. I wasn't counting. That'd be quick. Good Thank evening. Less than an hour. <laughs> um, tonight on your agenda, you have a resolution regarding the submission of, of uh, an amendment to our citizen particip participation plan regarding, can't hear me, regarding our CDBG program. And what we had to amend to the plan was uh, we had to add to it uh, emergency procedures uh, and, and for such like teleconferencing adding video conferencing and stuff so people the public can have their input during disaster emergency uh, procedures through what we're, like we're doing tonight so th that's all that um, that re for that resolution tonight we need uh, to allow to submit that amendment and like the mayor mentioned the farm market June 6 we are following a whole host of guidelines they're posted on the uh, uh, the Facebook, the, the bid uh, Facebook and the bid farmer's market f Facebook and their website. So you, you can see um, everything that we're going to, the rules, one way in and one way out of it, how many people we're going to be able to allow. And uh, also there's rules for the farmers that they, they're going to have to follow as well. And that's all I have for tonight. Okay. Any questions for Maria? Thank you, Maria. Thank you. EPW Commissioner. Good evening, all. Um, I want to extend the condolences, my condolences for your mom's passing. I didn't know about it until now. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, also, I want to start by thanking, thanking the uh, really the mayor and the elected officials and the taxpayers of the city of Middletown for keeping their trust in us and uh, making sure that we continue with our uh, capital projects, uh, some of which, like the mayor suggested, they are grant financed and some of them require some city funding. Uh, we had to maneuver uh, some of the projects around in their canceled water storage tank as an example in order to favor the construction of uh, replacement of uh, 1887 12-inch water main that will be going through a park that is uh, targeted for expansion and also replacing a major water <coughs> line coming from the water treatment plant all the way down to uh, Manhagen Avenue, and that would be phase one. So we, we appreciate the effort and of the elected officials and the taxpayers supporting us in making sure that our infrastructure is being updated so that we can continue to service our residents, uh, the, our um, uh, nursing homes, our uh, recreation facility, our, fighting, our firefighting, uh, good quality of life for people to live in the city of Middletown. And we are hoping that all this will be very temporary. Talking about the quality of life, please just reminding people that um, to cut your grass right now, the grass will, will be growing very fast at the beginning of the season. So please keep an eye on it. And we don't want to send code enforcement in there. We already have sent uh, over uh, 100 of letters reminding people that you have to cut your grass within five days. So please uh, help us out. We don't want to send letters. Just take care of the grass and just stay on top of it. And we would appreciate that very much. Following what the mayor just mentioned about the bulk pickup, something please to keep an eye on, which is an outside uh, people coming to deposit their garbage or their, ju uh, th their junk in the city of Middletown. Uh, that happens to us every year. If you see something, say something. You can simply just take a picture and call the police or DPW. During the day, call DPW. During uh, after hours and there in the evening, call the police department. 
and they'll be happy to come down over and they will take care of, you know, hopefully they'll catch the person doing it in there because that's really theft of service from uh, the taxpayers of the city of Middletown. This is very serious. It does cost us a lot of money. So please help us out by reporting it if you see it. Even illegal dumping in dead end road or anything like that, if you see anybody dumping, by all means call us and we'll be happy to pursue it. And we appreciate, you know, it takes a village. It takes everybody looking around and looking out for everybody to keep the city clean and uh, functioning. Um, the mayor also has reported on, on many, uh, advise you on many of the construction projects that are taking place. Uh, code enforcement, we are targeting right now to start the rental permit renewal inspection beginning of the month. We're not sure if it's going to go that way. We've been pushing it back, pushing it ba back, pushing it back. That's the time when our code enforcement officers will go into people's rental units and inspect them. And that presents, uh, you know, uh, it presents uneasiness on our side and uneasiness on the resident's side in there. So it's a very, very tough balancing act we're trying to, to, to arrange. But we want everybody in the meantime just to uh, be ready to submit their uh, rental permit application and fees so we are ready to inspect whenever it is safe for us to do so for both the residents and for our inspectors. In the meantime, we appreciate that uh, landlords will continue to keep an eye on the smoke detectors and basic uh, uh, safety uh, devices in the, in the buildings because we haven't been inspecting since this uh, COVID-19 started. We have not been inside buildings that are occupied. So help us out by making sure that they continue to be safe until we go in and inspect. We're talking about fire extinguishers, carbon monoxide detectors, smoke detectors. Extremely important. Please keep keep it up. Do not this. Uh, do not just take them off or take the batteries. Make sure that they are functioning to help protect your lives. We appreciate that very much. Um, Another, uh, with the COVID-19 in here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk fast a little bit. I want to thank the fire chief. Uh, today he gave us the uh, ladder truck to help clean all the third floor windows, which were not accessible in there. We were able to park on James Street, block the road without too many traffic. So it was a great time for us to take advantage of the slow traffic and no activities in downtown and go around with the ladder truck and clean all the windows in, in City Hall, Police Department and City Court. So we appreciate the cooperation, as always, from the fire department and the police department. Uh, the green infrastructure, you see a lot of activities. The mayor spoke about it, the downtown parking lots. The contract is expected to be signed today by Boyce Excavation. Orange and Rockland have been working very hard, removing, uh, relocating all the poles in James Street parking lot in there. And we appreciate, uh, we appreciate Orange and Rockland cooperation with us and uh, moving these poles with us. Um, without it, the project would not have been designed uh, the way we wanted it to be designed. Um, the electric bid for the uh, green infrastructure slash parking lot, the downtown parking lot improvement is out for bid in today's paper. So any electricians in there, they can look at it and um, hopefully they can bid it. Heritage Trail, I know a lot of questions in there. Alderman Kleiner keeps, you know, he's interested in that as many of you and the council president and the other aldermen. And uh, the construction is moving. Uh, it was nonstop throughout this period. And um, they are looking to shut down Dolson Town Road, and that's iffy date still, May 26 to install the box culvert. They are working within the city of Middletown right now. And um, they've done some drainage and they've done some sub base. So the, the, the work is moving along. Uh, New York Rising, that's three and a half million dollars that we received through the mayor, through the governor. And, um, and that project, that design is, is, uh, is moving along. Right now we are entering the phase of uh, uh, peer review or uh, value engineering, we call it, in order to try to cut down in methods and means of construction to make them less expensive. And um, this is what the engineer is doing right now in, in a coordination with us. That's NV5 from Manhattan, the consulting engineer. Uh, last week, they've done the ground penetrating radar um, for Grand Street to try to locate the structure that's underground on Grand Street and the, and the adjacent properties. So that's working. that work is moving along. We're hoping to put it out for bid ASAP again as soon as possible. Again, this is grant from the governor, and we appreciate that very much. It's very, uh, work that is very much needed. Um, Middletown, 
Walkill Water System Emergency Connection. That project is moving along through TAM construction. We've been having construction conferences in there at the site. Cottage Street Vault has been almost done, and there, the, that's no issues with it. The work is progressing. East Main Street, we had to relocate it and shift it a couple of times. It's East Main by Anthony Street. This, this work will provide for emergency interconnection between the town and the city. So if the town, they have a catastrophic failure within their water system, we'll be able to supply them from our 12-inch water main that's on East, on East Main Street, or we can supply them from Cottage Street, and vice versa. If the city of Middletown have a catastrophic failure in certain location or total system, God forbid, failure, we can get some water from them from different location. Uh, that's for emergency preparedness. And uh, this project has been in, in the works for a long time. Uh, majority of it is, uh, I think it, it's not the majority, I think it's 25% grant funded. And um, so now the construction is taking place. We're very excited about putting that process into, um, into play and to be available for us in case of any, any failures or any, any problems in our water systems for the town or the city. The town is also doing similar things with the town of Goshen, so that we will have that connectivity in there in just, just in case of emergency. Before you, there is that ADA curbs and sidewalks in there, and that's majority of it is grant uh, money except for 20%. And we would appreciate your support. The resolution is before you. If you have any question, I'll be happy to do it. I'll be happy to handle it. The good news is the low bidder left like almost a million dollars on the table. So we have a very favorable um, pricing for this project. We pushed very hard to get the DOT um, to approve it. It's been approved. Funding is in place with 20% uh, matching uh, from, uh, from the city. So that's before you. If you have any questions, I'll come back and discuss them when, when it's time to address that uh, resolution. Also, as the mayor said before you, there is a 20-inch uh, replacement or 12-inch uh, replacement water main, and I'll come back and uh, address it if you have any questions uh, regarding that when the resolution comes up. And with that, I will conclude my remarks if you have any questions for me. Any questions for Jacob? Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Fire Chief. Good evening, everybody. It's been a couple months. Um, we've had masks made for all our uh, first responders. They have to wear them um, out on alarms and keeping our social distancing. Um, we've participated with the uh, police department in, I don't even know what the number is, like over 250 uh, birthday runs over the last two months um, um, between uh, Jackie Welch and uh, Chief McLean handle, handling on that, and uh, I've gone out on a few myself. Um, very fun. Um, with that, we've also been busy with uh, a couple fires. Uh, we had uh, two fires at Park Hill Apartments on May 4th and May 9th, and we also had a fire uh 33 Harrison Street on May 6th. Um, tonight before you is a resolution uh, this is for the career staff. If you remember a couple of years ago, we did one, revised the uh, volunteer rules and regulations. Uh, this is now for the, um, the career side of the department, revising the rules and regulations. Um, we've had uh, numerous uh, donations throughout the couple months with masks and uh, gowns, sanitizer. A couple of restaurants have dropped off food to Central uh, Firehouse, um, and uh, so we want to thank the uh, many um, the businesses out there that uh, help support us. Um, for March, we had 68 um, alarms. Uh, for April, we had 55. Um, and tomorrow um, will be the unofficial last day for our fire inspector. He's uh, beginning his retirement process. The canvas letters have been sent out and um, hopefully we be moving along uh, quickly in his replacement and doing interviews. So we'll be looking for a new candidate f from the career staff at this point f for that position. Any questions? Hey, Alderman Kleiner. 
Um, yeah, thank you, Chief. Do you, have you found a cause for those fires at um, the College Hill or Park Hill apartments? Do you know what? Uh, they are both uh, under investigation through the Orange County um, no. okay. Task Force and also through um, a um, insurance uh, fire investigator as well. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Alderman Johnson. Thank you, Don. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Superintendent of Recreation. Hey, good evening, folks. Um, camps and pools, it was a very hard decision to make. Uh, besides that, affecting our, our children and our parents, uh, it affects about 120 staff members that we employ in the summer. Uh, to not be able to do that safely, responsibly, and everybody knowing they would be safe and parents confident their kids could be there, it's not worth running. I've spoke to the health department. The criteria they think that would be coming down, it wouldn't be a camp, it would be a prison. <laughs> so it is definitely the best move by the city of Middletown. Sad, but definitely the best move. With that being said, we are thinking beyond outside the box. Uh, tonight at 6, we now have a YouTube channel. Things stay out there. You see we're doing the fitnesses on Tuesday and Thursday. You see there's story time on Thursday. Uh, there was another magic show today at 6 o'clock. So you can go to the YouTube and see that. The kid's incredible. He's one of our lifeguards. So we're doing all these little things trying to keep part-timers employed. This YouTube page, we will be doing sports skills and clinics. We will be doing cooking clinics. So we're doing our best to keep people engaged virtually. Uh, we just put a scavenger hunt up. So that's the type of recreation we're going to have to do right now. So on top of that, and the, the mayor mentioned that the, the food program, both the care packages, the word I have is teamwork. The churches, the businesses, I mean, what we went and picked up cases and cases of napkins today that people were giving us. It's amazing. The fine work the school district, the lunch program's doing is unbelievable. That is a well-oiled machine. The pitchers, the amount of coolers, Mid-City showing up with their drivers, one bus after another backing up, and then our staff helping load and going to deliver. The smiles on the kid's face, the parent's face, the gifts they're giving, all the people doing it. It's Teamwork's the word. Uh, amazing what's going on there. Um, maintenance. I have to give one big shout out to John Bianchi, who is very creative. <laughs> his, his talent, his knowledge, his skill has saved us hundreds of thousands of dollars in that new building. We're lucky enough to have Mark Sherman, who's a new employee, also incredible talent, can make and build anything. When you guys see that new facility, you're not going to believe the transformation. Our kids, when they come back, are going to have an incredible preschool, boxing, community, gym, outdoor area. We are so busy right now, I don't even know how we even be able to take care of Little League fields and everything. <laughs> and one of the pluses out of this, our athletic fields have never looked so good. They got a break they have not had ever. Like the frost isn't out of the ground and Little League kids are tromping on it. And they're going to last longer because of this break. Besides our guys doing that facility, they're also been out at the reservoir. As well as the reservoir, you see the train on County Route 78 now has signage. Hmm. That's not done, folks. There's going to be some stones around that, some shrubs around that. There's going to be lighting on that. And when we get all this done, I think we'll probably be doing a lot more in-house with the Wolf Slayer athletic fields as well. So we are very busy. We are, we are having at it. Um, I'm very proud of our staff, especially our maintenance. The quality of work and the pride, the part-timers we've picked up and what they've gotten done and like Jacob said, the grass is growing. Just keeping up with all of those facilities alone is, is beyond full-time work. And again, I can't say enough about our Parks Department crew and the pride and what they've done. So that, that's incredible. Um, that, that's all I have for this evening. Just folks, when we open up that dog park and those tennis courts, we're going to have signage up that reminds you of social distancing. And the folks have to do it or we're going to lock them back up. And that's for the safety of our own community. And that's all I have tonight. And thank you for your support. Any questions for Chris? Thank you, Chris. John? 
Yes, I have uh, one announcement about the primary election that is going to happen on June 23rd of this year. Uh, the New York State Governor uh, Cuomo signed an executive order 20226, which required the Board of Elections of New York to send every <coughs> eligible voter an absentee ballot application for the election to be held on June 23rd. There also is going to be early voting, and that will be at the Senior Center. That starts at June 13th through June 21st, and the times and the dates will be on our website. And there's any questions about that, you can call the Board of Elections or our office at 346-416-HEX. Uh, That's all I have. Any questions for John? Okay. Remarks of Alman, Alman Burr. Um, my condolences, Dr. Johnson, to your mother's passing. Thank you. uh, Mayor, thanks again for a great presentation, keeping us updated on all the information. And everybody just stay safe. Thank you and happy Memorial Day. Alman John Fitzwalk. Good evening, everyone. Again, my condolences to Alderman Johnson and Thank your you. family. Sorry to hear. And Mary did a wonderful job with the overview. Uh, thank you for everything that you, all the information that you've given us, and, and we're moving forward. Thank you. Alderman Kleiner. Um, thank you, uh, Alderman Johnson. My condolences, too. I did not know, yeah. so uh, sorry to hear. Uh, I just want to tell everyone, don't forget Memorial Day. We have a lot of people out in those veterans' homes now, World War II vets who aren't making it, and, and it's a shame. So keep them, and please keep everyone who served this country and pay the ultimate price. Um, remember them on Memorial Day. Thank you. All the record, so. Paul, I'm so sorry. I lost Thank your you. Mom. <laughs> very, very sorry to hear that. My condolences to you and your whole family. Um, I want to say thank you briefly to our essential workers for everything you do to ensure our safety, our health, our food supply, services, everything that you do. I want to say thank you to the teachers who are helping support us struggling parents as we try to educate our kids and work from home. There are 26 days of school left. Just thought I'd just give that little <laughs> beam of light to those of us still getting it done. Um, the census, I myself am guilty. I only did this like a week and a half ago and I shared it on Facebook to remind people and I actually got a few people who were like, hey, I did it too. It's, it's such an easy link to do it online. Forget 10 minutes, it took me four, and I've got five people to register. It's no time at all. It's very important in our city, so please, please do it. And um, for REC, I have to say, I'm on California, so they're up and down my block, back and <laughs> forth all the time, and I can't wait to see it. I was able to tour it at the start of this project, and the vision alone is amazing, and I look forward to those doors opening up to our community once again. That's all I have tonight. Stay safe. Alwyn Johnson. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind words, everyone. We were in hospice for a few months, so I learned a lot about my mom and a lot about myself, so I guess that was a good thing. On a more business note, as uh, chairman of the Legislative Committee, we have to renew the live music ordinance. It'll be our third year. We were right in time to do that, and I asked the mayor if he chooses to offer some background as to why that's still something that's appropriate. Well, we haven't really had any major problems with it, and um, so I would recommend we do it. Um, I don't know how effective it's going to be this year, right. but, you know, restaurants aren't scheduled really to open probably until late June, early July, so it'll probably be a good shot in your arm for those that can provide it, but uh, it's important, I think, that we renew it and give it another shot. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions or any, any of the board on it? Any other questions? So thank okay. you. That will be a resolution from the floor. Thank you very much. Okay. Alderman Green? Sure. Um, yeah, Alder, Alderman Johnson, uh, my uh, condolences to you and your family. You. Definitely will be in uh, my thoughts. Um, you know, thank you, uh, Mayor, for a very thorough report tonight. Um, you know, definitely a lot of questions answered that we've been hearing about um, in terms of parks, and, uh, parks excuse me, and camps and uh, you know, it is sad to see that uh, certain things do have to be closed, but we do know it's for the right reasons. We do know Brink and everyone wouldn't make these tough decisions if it really wasn't for the best of everyone in our city. 
Um, and I will say, I actually did drive by Watts Park the other day and look at the field and go, wow, that is so green and so nice. And it's so funny that you bring that up. So that that's funny that uh, it is something that we noticed. Um, I was asked to uh, just briefly uh, thank the fire and police departments and everyone who's going out and doing those birthday runs. Um, there's been a few through the development I live in and the, the folks who I see all say, you know, please make sure you thank everyone for doing that. It's such a spirit lifter, not only for the people who receive the birthday cheers, but for everyone who uh, who sometimes likes to see uh, these vehicles and things out on a, uh, a a good call, a good reason. So it's a a nice thing to see. Um, and I also just want to do a big shout out. Um, the last one that was through our development, I believe, was uh, for. 90-year-old uh, Ernie O'Dell, who is a crossing guard for the city, has been for a very long time, and uh, I think I did miss it at the last meeting, but I did want to say a happy birthday to him. He's very dedicated to the city, and I've never heard a bad word about him. So, uh, you know, thank you, everyone, for all you're doing for us, and I hope everyone stays safe, and, you know, we'll see you on the other side of this. Well, uh, my condolences to uh, Dr. Johnson. Thank you. Uh, also, thank you, thanks to the mayor, just to... For all the information it's just a reminder that we're all in this together uh we got to help each other out i know we're getting antsy it's getting summertime we want to get back to the way things were but until there's a vaccine we really need to work together wear our masks you know respect the social distancing rules not just for yourself but for everybody especially the the elderly and and the little ones so thanks for that reminder alderman johnson alderman who i mean massey alderman who it's all those it's all those condolences that got got to your brain. <laughs> that might be an insult to him. <laughs> Been a very long night. I'll talk to you later. I'll, I'll be quick then. Uh, certainly Memorial Day is coming up, and please everyone just remember the uh, people we lost and their families. And then just uh, quickly, since the last meeting, I've had a number of people contact me and and. Just want to know what I said. Was I uh, giving out uh, true figures and everything? And uh, yes, I was. Uh, the million dollars we we lost every year, and it's been five years now. So when the mayor put up that we have a deficit of 5.1 million dollars, you know where five million of that could have come, and then we're going to be spending another. 1.8 million dollars so yes what i said at the last meeting was completely accurate uh so i want to thank those people who did contact me and i and one person did ask me he said uh, mr massey what do you feel about unions and here's what i told that person i was a member when i was teaching of obviously the teachers union and i was a member of this actual csea union when i worked for the county i have absolutely no problems i'm actually pro-union what I am against is four or five bullies that uh, stop the union from voting on an issue that would have saved the city over a million dollars a year and would have put extra money in their pockets. Each, at this date, each CSEA union member would have been profited by around $9,000 over the last uh, five years. So I stand by what I said, and we're going to have to move forward, and, and, and we will move forward with the new uh, plan. And I did want to thank the mayor uh, for his presentation tonight, but also he answered the questions that I certainly have always had uh, with regards to narrow streets and one-way streets. So uh, thank you, Mayor. Condolences to Alderman Johnson and his family. Thank you. New business. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to declare the police department vehicle surplus property. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Rem Pursoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin to approve revised Middletown Fire Department rules and regulations. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green 
to approve the closing of Erie Way every Saturday for the farmer's market from Saturday, June 6th through Saturday, October 24th from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Resolution possible, Alderman Green, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Bro. Graham Kazoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois. To amend the city code to add Amtra Avenue will be a stop street at Walnut Lane. Resolution, resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, second by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Bro. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to approve a quote from Cherry Road Technologies in the amount of $6,000 for the digital town hall public access to all open meetings starting from July 1st through June 20th, 2021. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Olawun Ram Kassoon to reschedule the uh, spring bulk pickup. Resolution sponsored by Olawun Ram Kassoon, seconded by Olawun Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner to approve and the submission of the amendment to the Citizens Participation Plan regarding the administration of the Community Development Block Grant Program, CDBG. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to authorize the treasurer to transfer $11,800 within the Parks and Recreation 2020 budget for the purchase of a Ferris mower and snowblower. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey. To authorize the treasurer to transfer from the general fund balance $57,600 to fund a final payment of the roundabout project. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey. Second by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Oldman Tobin that the sum of $870,000 is hereby appropriated pursuant to a ban and make available to cover the cost of participation in the ADA Accessible Sidewalks and Ramps Project. Resolution sponsored by Oldman Tobin, seconded by Oldman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green <clears throat> to accept the bid for the ADA Accessible Sidewalks and Ramps Project. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Ram Kassoon. Any discussion? Alderman Kleiner? Uh, I, I just wanted to point out for anyone who thinks that we don't scrutinize these bids carefully, the bid was for approximately $3,400,000. Someone found a 30 cent discrepancy in the bid. So it went from $3,400,030 to $3,400,070. So, Jacob, congratulations. <laughs> anyone else? Thank you. Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsor by Alderman Johnson to accept the bid for the uh, 20 and 12 inch water main replacements, Middletown water system improvements. Resolution sponsor by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? 
Aye. Resol resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Lynn Massey, authorizing the issuance of an additional two million thirty-three thousand five hundred and fifty-five dollar bonds and the relocation of bonds authorized previously for the improvements to water tanks to pay costs in connection with the water system improvements. Resolution by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Green. Bro. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. That is all for new business. Unfinished business. Mr. Mr. President, as discussed earlier, I'd like to make a motion that the Council approve the live music ordinance uh, and renew it as for the last two years to cover the period of May 18th, 2020 to October 15th, 2020. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson. Do I have a second? Alderman Ray Kassoon. Any discussion? Bro? Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. The resolution passes. We have a motion from the floor? No. That was it. That was it? Yes, sir. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be ordered that the claims be adjusted and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Move for adjournment. So moved. Second.